Please ask you to jam your hands together as we welcome Dr. Mensa Otabe, who takes us in the message, Victoria's Life. Somebody give praise to God this evening. We honor the leadership of this house. We honor the gifts of God present in this place. And we speak God's grace and God's favor over our lives. Yesterday we talked about the glory of God restored. And today we are looking at where the Christian gets his victory from. How do we become victorious as Christians? There is a verse that has become almost a creed in the Christian church. And that verse is 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 14. And it simply reads, The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit, be with you all. It is a statement we are used to, we make in our services, especially when we are closing our services. Actually, we should be reciting it when we are about to begin, not when we are closing. And in this passage, you see the Trinity present. Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, and God the Father. To God the Father is assigned love. To the Holy Spirit is assigned communion or fellowship. And to Jesus Christ is assigned grace. We experience God's grace through Christ. We fellowship with God through the Holy Spirit. And we experience God's love through the Father giving to us. But I will be focusing on grace because it's the source of our power as Christians. So what is grace? Grace is God's character by which he shows himself compassionate to us. Grace is God's goodwill towards us. It is God being kind to us. It originates from God and it depends on God. It allows God's love to reach out to us. And even the most evil person can be touched by God because of grace. Grace is something you receive that you don't merit. It is God's willingness to share in our lives. Grace is God's help extended to us. It is what makes God stand with us when we are weak. When we are down, it is grace that lifts us up. And when you look through your Bible, generally, you would know that your Bible is divided into two portions, the Old Testament and the New Testament. The Old Testament deals with several things, but the primary function of the Old Testament is that God gave the children of Israel a law from the book of Exodus onwards. The New Testament starts with grace. So John tells us that the law was given by Moses, but grace comes through Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 4 verse 14 to 16 says, For if those who are of the law are heirs, faith is made void, and the promise made of no effect. Because the law brings about wrath. For where there is no law, there is no transgression. Therefore it is of faith that it might be according to grace. Therefore it is of faith that it might be according to grace. Now if you note the argument in the passage, verse 14 says... If being an heir of God or being a child of God is based on the law, then faith is void. Faith is empty. 
And the promise of God has no effect In verse 15 we are told Why the law does not produce Salvation or heirs Because first It brings about wrath No relationship And second Consciousness of sin So the law was good But the law did not make people heirs of God Verse 16 therefore tells us that If the law does not make us heirs of God Then what makes us heirs of God And it answers by saying Faith Therefore it is of faith That it might be according to grace If something requires faith It also requires grace Because faith cannot operate without grace Where there is faith, there must be grace Where there is grace, there must be faith Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 says For by grace you have been saved For grace you have been saved through faith By grace you have been saved through faith That not of yourselves, it is the gift of God By grace you are saved through faith So what does that passage mean? It means that faith operates through grace Grace qualifies us But faith enables us There are people who are here who expect to be healed The reason God will heal you is because of grace But the reason you will receive the healing is because of faith Because grace will give to you But faith must take it Let me illustrate it Let me give you an example Imagine that you are Very, very broke And I know you are not broke All of you are rich in Christ But just imagine it That you are broke You have no money You are down And you are standing Somewhere And somebody comes across Opposite you And the person holds in his hand A basket Of gold Or if you want it in cash A basket of money And he says Come and get it So You need the money He has the money And he's standing At a point and says come and get it When he says Come and get it You try to go and get the money But in between you And him You discover there is a very Big gutter A big gap Something between you And the money So here you are You are poor There is a solution standing there But there is a gap between you And the solution The gutter is so wide You can't cross it So you are frustrated You are poor You see the solution But there is a big gutter Then whilst you are frustrated And thinking about How do I get this thing that I'm Hoping for The person who is holding the money Rolls out a bridge From where he is To where you are So now you have Access to be able to move From where you are To where he is Because he has provided a bridge That bridge is what I call grace Grace gives you access to what God has Grace gives you access to receive from God But after he has rolled out the bridge You don't have the money He has the money You have the poverty He has the bridge You can walk on the bridge Grace is working But you must now Walk on the bridge And that is called faith Now for you to walk on the bridge You have to believe That the bridge that has been provided for you Can support your weight And that when you walk on it You will not fall into the gutter That is faith Grace provides 
faith receives. Grace provides and faith receives. Everything that God has for us, he gives it to us by grace. But everything God provides by grace, we must receive by faith. So, how do we then get the grace? Do we ask God to do it? Even when you don't ask God for it, he will provide you grace. But faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So everything that God makes available to us by grace, we have to receive by faith. The challenge of the Christian is not that God has not made grace available. The challenge of the Christian is that God has built the bridge of grace, but we haven't developed the faith to walk on the bridge of grace. Anything that is of grace depends on God. So in Galatians chapter 3 verse 1 to 9, the apostle Paul asked the church several questions. He says, this only I want to learn from you. Did you receive the spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Are you so foolish having begun in the spirit? Are you now being made perfect by the flesh? Have you suffered so many things in vain if it was then in vain? Therefore, he who supplies the spirit to you and works miracles among you, does he do it by the works of the law or by faith? So the Bible says that grace and faith enables us to receive the spirit, enables us to live righteously, enables us to minister the power of the spirit, And enables us to work the miracles of God. But God's grace is not capricious. God's grace can be frustrated. God's grace can be limited. Of late, there has been a resurgence of the preaching of grace. And everything that comes fresh it's profound it's new it's exciting and sometimes can be abused so for example people tend to think that when a person is walking in grace Grace somehow lowers God's standards. But we have to let the scripture speak for itself. Jesus says in Matthew chapter 5 verse 17, Do not think that I came to destroy the law or the prophets. I did not come to destroy but to fulfill. For assuredly I say to you till heaven and earth pass away, Not one jot or one tittle will by no means pass from the law till all is fulfilled. So Jesus makes it quite clear that his mission of bringing grace is to fulfill the law, not to destroy it. Then from verse 27, Jesus says something very profound. He says, you have heard that it was said to those of old. You shall not commit adultery. But I say to you, that whoever looks at a woman to lust for her, has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Jesus is comparing the law and grace. And watch how he compares it. He says, the law says, Thou shalt not commit adultery. That's what Moses said. But this is what I say. Grace. This is grace speaking. Whoever looks at a woman to lust after her in his heart has already committed adultery. So let me ask you, between the law and grace, which one has a higher standard? Grace. So when a person is walking by the grace of God, the standard 
of God is not lowered As a matter of fact The standard of God is higher When we come to walk by grace Because the law Will only identify sin After it has been committed But grace identifies sin When it is initiated in the thoughts So that it doesn't become a manifestation So the grace of God says I don't want you to fulfill the lust of the flesh So when you start thinking it I will arrest it So when we walk by grace We walk by a higher standard It is this grace of God Which the Bible says we must not Abuse And we must not Hinder And we must not frustrate Because everything we receive Every act of God Is an act of his grace A miracle Is a product of grace A man of God will pray A man of God will fast But the miracle Is God's grace No amount of prayer No amount of fasting No amount of praise and worship Can produce a miracle Unless God rolls out the bridge We cannot walk on it to receive our miracle It is the grace of God that invites us To partake of the blessing of God And it is our faith that walks on the grace of God To receive from God Tonight, God is going to roll out a bridge towards you He's going to roll out a bridge of prosperity He's going to roll out a bridge of healing He's going to roll out a bridge of deliverance But you have to stand and walk on that bridge Because grace must always be activated by faith There are a few things that hinder the grace of God It hinders the grace of God The first thing That hinders the grace of God Is a proud spirit A proud spirit 1 Peter chapter 5 Verse 5 to 7 Therefore humble yourselves Verse 6 Under the mighty hand of God That he may exalt you in due time Humble yourselves Under the mighty hand of God That he may exalt you Verse 5 says God resists the proud But gives grace to the humble Jesus says when we come to him We have to come as little children That doesn't mean that Act like a childish way But he means come with humility Not a haughty spirit Sometimes even in our marriages The way we conduct our marriages Can frustrate the grace of God 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 7 Husbands likewise dwell with them With understanding Giving honor to your wife as to the weaker vessel And as being heirs together of the grace of life That your prayers may not be hindered God's grace can be hindered In an atmosphere of insensitivity God's grace can be hindered In an atmosphere of bitterness And God's grace Can be hindered When you devalue what he has blessed you with Esau was blessed with a birthright He had no value for it And he lost it The grace of God is an act of God But that act of God can be frustrated For us to receive the power of God For us to receive the miracles of God For us to receive that breakthrough that we are desiring It is a work of grace It is not based on how hard you pray It's great to pray How long you fast It's great to fast It is first a work of grace Your prayer and your fasting Is an act of faith It is you now Walking on the grace of God And tonight I pray that the grace of God Will appear to everybody In a very special way I pray that God's grace will be manifested to you And be multiplied over your life Whatever you came here with believing God for an answer I pray that the grace of God will be sufficient for you That his grace will be enough for you Because his grace is always enough 
There is nothing bigger and better and greater than the grace of God. His grace is sufficient and his grace will make a way for you. I want us just to spend a few moments in prayer and I want you to begin to talk to God and just thank him for the grace that he has made available to you. Whatever you desire from him, thank him that his grace is made available to you. Just begin to talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord. Rise up and talk to the Lord. And thank him for the grace. Some of you are believing God for healing. There is a grace of healing. You are believing God for a miracle. There is a grace of miracle. You are believing God for financial prosperity. There is grace for financial prosperity. You are believing God for healing of your marriage. There is grace for that. Whatever you believe God for, there is grace for it. The grace of God is sufficient. Oh yes, we thank you Lord for your grace that is made available For every need in this arena And for everyone listening by way of television or radio Thank you for grace that is made available We do not frustrate your grace We do not abandon your grace Father, we choose to stand in your grace And to do warfare in your grace And Father, we pray that as you roll the bridge of grace to us That faith will be activated in everyone tonight that a miracle will embrace your children. Let everybody live here tonight with an answer to prayer. And everybody living here with a shout of victory. That God has been good to me. His grace has been sufficient. And by faith I have received it. In Jesus name. Amen and amen. God bless you. And have a blessed, blessed moment in Christ. Christ.